Happy Monday. I'm excited to be here with you guys today. I know that we're supposed to be doing coffee talk, and I do have my coffee here. I showed this cute little mug on my Instagram stories this morning, but it's now cold, and I've switched over to water for the day, and I've got my Jesus Loves This Hot Mess mug. And I'm doing a little business chat this morning. So as you guys, come on, would you say hello and where you're coming from? Um, to all of our friends in Texas, God bless you. We're praying for you around the rest of the country. Uh, but I'm going to talk to my business owning friends today, okay? If you're not a business owner, listen, I've spent all morning um, in conversations and meetings about my Paint Finish of the Month Club that is um, relaunching in the next two to three weeks, which you can sign up for because if you're not following me for business, you're definitely probably following me for painting and decorating ideas. So um, for those of you who are not interested in business stuff at all, you're just going to want to blast on out of here and I'm unoffended. I love you still. Now I do know that some of you have emailed me and said that for some reason the sound of my voice puts your kids to sleep and I don't know whether to be honored or mortified. So if you're rocking a baby and you need to put them to sleep, hey, stay, stay, stay. Hey, Stacy, all good really close to Allwood, says she needs this topic. So I'm going to help some of you guys try to give you some tips on why people aren't talking back to you on your Facebook page and how you can fix that. And Jessica says my hair looks great. Jessica, babe, I haven't even showered today because as soon as I'm done with this Facebook Live, I'm going for a run. And then after my run, I have a podcast. And then after my podcast, I'm meeting with my business therapist. And for those of you who don't know, all the women that I coach every month know this. Um, yes, I've had a business therapist, if you want to call her that, um, for over three years. And we meet um, almost every month and basically just keep my head straight. And for those of you who are business owners and you're like, my gosh, um, this thing is so much more in depth than I thought. Um, running my own business has a lot more junk attached to it than what I thought. I signed up to teach people how to do yada, 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 and instead I got to do a lot of freaking head work. I got a lot of people problems. I don't know how to manage all this stuff. Listen, um, having a therapist, a counselor, uh, what else What else would you call them? Um, psychologist, <laughs> whatever, shrink that you can talk to is one of the best things I've done for my business. Best things I've done for my business. She helps me keep straight up here because when I have got junk up here, my business goes sideways every day of the week. So for those of you whose business has gone sideways, get some help. Get some help. I love you enough to tell you that. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Okay, why people aren't talking to you on your Facebook page? Does anybody have this issue? If so, let me know, please. Um, but there's four reasons why people aren't talking to you, and then I'm going to give you some tips to help, okay? Are you ready? And maybe you're not a business owner, but you have a friend that is. Maybe that um, you have somebody um, who you know could be blessed by this. Share this to them if you would, okay? All right, for those of you who have a business Facebook page, listen. Um, one of the biggest complaints I get from people is that, um, you know, Facebook hides their stuff is number one, and number two, people aren't talking back. And I've got four reasons people aren't talking back. Number one, good morning, Rachel. Good morning, Tiffany. Or after lunch, I guess. Number one, they don't know you. Number one, they don't know you. Thanks, Tara Sue, for sharing. Uh, this is the problem. A lot of times, people will start asking some questions on Facebook. They'll start maybe doing a few Facebook Lives, and they'll kind of be dipping their toe into the kind of getting to know their Facebook community and letting their Facebook community get to know them. And they'll be like, and nobody's answering me. And this is why. How many of you know what it feels like to be like walking down the street, maybe you're out shopping, you're somewhere, and, and, and up in the distance, you see one of those people, here, let me, let me grab a prop, okay? Let me grab a prop. You see one of those people who has a clipboard and a little pen, and they're asking people questions as they walk by, and you're like, no, 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 no eye contact. If I have no eye contact with that chick, then she won't ask me any questions, and I won't have to answer anything, because I feel awkward not answer anything, but I don't wanna answer anything, and so no eye contact. Like, I'm not even gonna look at her. You know what I mean? Who knows what I mean? Right, Leanne, you wanna run, right? Okay, so for some of you, that's how people feel when you're on your Facebook page and you're asking some questions. They're like, know this person like why would I answer questions for someone I don't know okay and so the key is letting them know you the key is 
exposing yourself, like coming out from behind your Facebook page and actually putting some pictures of you and your family or putting you in your business or showing what you're having for dinner. Perhaps talking about the rough day you had and what you did to get your mind straight. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie, Robina is my best biz buddy, and she just shared my video. And Carrie, I love you. Thank you so much. Everybody needs a best biz buddy. And so um, the alternative or the flip side of that is, let's say now you're at the same shopping mall and you see your neighbor. You see your neighbor walking up to you. And your neighbor has the same clipboard, the same clippy clippy, same pin, the same look on her face. You know she's about to ask you some questions. And you're like, what, girl? What? What are you doing? What are you going to ask me? Fine, I'll answer you because I love you. What are you asking? What? 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 Because you know her, right? If it's my neighbor Maureen standing in a mall wanting to ask me some questions, I'm all over it because I know her. So the key... Thank you, Carrie. I think it was a God analogy because you're saying it's a good analogy because I got that idea a couple months ago. And I'm like, that's what it feels like when people are on Facebook and there's random questions coming at them because people are busy. And so they just feel like, I don't know, like, don't be the lady with the clipboard. Okay. Be the neighbor with the clipboard. That's what we're saying. Thank you, Leslie Fear, for sharing my video. You're always so faithful. God bless you. And so um, the key to you making the leap from strange lady with the clipboard to neighbor Maureen with a clipboard, and my neighbor Maureen has no idea I'm actually even using her as an example. Please say hello to my neighbor Maureen, is allowing your Facebook community to get to know you. Now let me tell you a couple things. It feels vulnerable, it feels scary, okay? What if there's psychos? Um, what if you're showing your family and there's killers? Um, what if um, you uh, show a picture of yourself and everybody's like, oh Lord, I didn't know that that's what she looked like and, and that her ears were that big. Um, there's a million things that starts to go through someone's mind, especially if you're a woman, especially if you're a woman creative. When you start to put yourself out in the world, you feel very exposed. You feel very exposed. Nikki, honey, I'm not a people person either. Welcome to my home office where I sit for six to eight hours a day and speak to zero people. There's my puppy under the front door. Say hello to Stella. That's the only person that I talk to. Okay, I am a complete introvert, which you can find over on my website. I have an entire article on being an introvert. But listen, if you are introverted and shy, Baby, Facebook can be your jam because you have complete control. It's different than you standing up on a stage and talking in front of people. Completely different, I promise you. The difference is on social media, you can allow people in only as much um, as you want. Uh, number two, you can end things. You can end things as soon as you want to. I could hit finish right here, right now. If all of a sudden all those introverted feelings started welling up and I was like, ha, ha, ha. Um, I know being an introvert, what that feels like to think I'm going to vomit, pass out and die in front of all these people. I would rather walk clear around the entire football field to get a seat in the stadium than walk in front of a few people. Completely right here, my friends. This is why I do therapy. <laughs> but social media is different. I promise you it is. And so one of the ways you can get people to talk back to you, talk back to you, is by talking to them like they're human beings. And when you're asking them some questions, you have to, you have, to have like an onboarding process, my friends. There has to be a period of time where you kind of, you get to know each other a little bit. You do the shimmy shimmy shake, okay? It's, it's like making a new friend. It's like going out on a first date. It's like um, getting to know one another a little bit and then they will begin to start talking back to you. But if you're just randomly asking strangers to answer questions, they're like, Avoid the clipboard lady. Avoid her at all costs, okay? So start letting them get to know you. Expose a little bit of your life. Show them some things that you, that you do and you don't like. There's a saying, let me think. You can love me or you can hate me, but there's no money in the middle. I just heard that at an amazing, brilliant conference I was at in Toronto. You can love me or you can hate me, but there's no money in the middle. Essentially what that means is people need to know what you stand for. Um, on your social media. And that doesn't mean you need to be talking about politics, things that are offensive, things that are um, hot topics, but it does mean that you need to let them know enough about you that they know the things that you're valued and aligned with, okay? So 
Everybody that follows my Facebook page knows I'm a Jesus lover. They know it. It's no surprise. I'm not trying to hide that piece of my life. You all know that I am the mother of three wild children. You know this. I'm not nervous about that. Listen, if somebody, I know people are like, if I talk about my kids, if I show my kids, what have you. If somebody is wanting to get at your kids, they will find a way regardless of if you allow them to be shown just a little bit on your social media. People fall in love with people. They don't fall in love with brands. People will respond to people they know, like, and trust. And the only way you can get people to know, like, and trust you is by showing them who you are, a little bit of who you are. And so I encourage you to do that. It can be scary, but I promise you, um, if you're in a position where you're like, oh, my Facebook page it stinks, it's awful, Facebook algorithms, Mark Zuckerberg, blah, blah, blah. Okay, <laughs> one of the best ways you can revive your dying Facebook page is to get your engagement up, which comes from allowing people to know who you are and getting some conversation started, okay? So point number two, if people aren't talking back to you on your Facebook page, thank you. What, I'm the only person who looks great in orange, that's so funny. Baby, let me tell you something. This was a very expensive, highly sought after designer piece of clothing that I got at Sam's Club a few years ago. Right there. Yeah, that's right. So number two, if people, if you're getting crickets on your page, if you're getting crickets on your page, you're probably trying to sell them too much. You need to be giving more and selling less. Okay, so listen, um, I kind of compare the stages of what people can do with your Facebook content like this. Okay, so um, there's a couple things they can do. They can like, I'm writing down my notes so I don't forget. They can comment and they can share. Okay, if they like your comment um, and they give it a like, it's kind of like a handshake, like a, yeah, nice to meet you type of deal, right? Okay. If they give you a comment that's more like a hug, like you're taking that relationship one step further, okay? Um, but if they share your content, baby, that's a on the lips kiss. They just went in for the kiss, for reals, okay? You've taken that relationship to a whole nother level, all right? And so when you're putting stuff on your social media, yes, it's great to get likes, but you really want comments and you definitely want shares. That's why when you guys share like my Facebook lives like this, um, that has the ability to meet, reach so many other people, which has the ability to help my business, which helps me to help more people, hopefully, and encourage more women. And it's just like this great continuous cycle, okay? So if you are selling all the time, nobody is going to be sharing that kind of content, a lot of times, thank you all for your kisses. I, I appreciate that. I wonder if that's a safe analogy in a situation like this. I use that analogy like in my coaching group because it's, you know, 450 women, not, not thousands of people on a Facebook Live. Not thousands, we have hundreds. But so anyway, um, and now I've lost my train of thought because you're all talking about kissing. Okay, and so I'm blushing like Mr. Magic's in the room. All right, so, um, so my encouragement to you is for you to give more, sell less. If you guys have not read Gary Vanderchuk's book, do I have it right here? I do not. It's called Jab, 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 Right Hook. And I don't have it on my desk. Jab, 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 Right Hook. And basically, let me give you the whole premise of Gary V's book, okay? For those of you who don't know who Gary V is, um, um, we're praying that his mouth gets sanctified. So just know before you go follow him on Facebook, I love him and all of his thinking, but there's cussing. There's custom. Get the kids out of the room. This book is phenomenal. All right. Basically, it says this. When you're on social media, you need to give. Give people an idea. Give them some encouragement. Give them a thought. Give them uh, something that's valuable to them. Give them a tip. Give them a deal. Give them something that's going to make their life better. Give them, give them, give them, then come in for a sell. Okay. So give to people, give to people, give to people, sell. Now, it's going to be different for those of you who have like a clothing boutique and all you're going to be doing is all day long putting on outfits that are for sale. The majority of you um, are, you know, makers, creatives, painters, etc. And nobody wants to see what you're selling all day long. So slow your roll. Slow your roll. I got to tell you, that's one of my very favorite sayings and I use it whenever I can. I tell my kids all the time, slow your roll. What are you listening to on the radio? You better slow your roll. <laughs> so, 
So slow your roll when it comes to selling. Give a little more on your Facebook page and, a, and sell a little less. If you can, just send them over to your website where they will see full good and well what they can buy from you. Um, Pamela, his name is Gary Vandercheck. If you just type in Gary V, I think it's V-E-E, -E, you can find it really easily. Um, he's brilliant in the marketing world. He's absolutely brilliant. So that was point number two. Give more, sell less. Point number three, quit hiding behind your Facebook page. I mentioned this earlier, but people buy, write this down. Somebody type it out. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. None of us are Coca-Cola, we're not Starbucks, um, we're not a big brand, we're just people. We're just people who are running a business. We're just people who are running a business. So in order for them to know, like, and trust you, you literally have to take the guard down. Quit hiding behind your page, especially you introverted, shy people who um, think that it's gonna be scary and scare you to death to go on Facebook Live for the first time. Listen, um, I have challenges in my coaching group all the time for people to go live. I give them tips and ideas to go live from. Um, I named this video. In fact, let me put it in the comments right now and I'll pin this so you have it, okay? I named this video. Um, there's a list on there where you can get 60 things that you could go live about on your Facebook page today. Today, okay? You can go get that free video. You can go buy my Facebook live training. My Facebook live training is $77 though. Join my coaching group for $47. You get it for free. It, it's it's, it's good math, people, just to join my coaching. But for those of you who say it sounds terrifying, Lindsay, um, sometimes you know how we have this ability to create something in our mind that then after we do it, we're like, why was I like all worked up over that? Let me give you a good example. Two weeks ago for the first time I went kayaking. Um, because I have a real fear of water, did not learn how to swim until I was 39, true story. Um, I did a triathlon for my 40th birthday. Some of you may remember that. Um, I was on the Today Show because they were doing a segment on women celebrating their 40th birthday in non-traditional um, ways. Like, I wasn't going to Vegas. I didn't, you know, wasn't having a huge party. I wanted to do a triathlon with a bunch of my friends because there's a couple things that are important to me. One, looking good at 40. Um, two, my friends. Three, demonstrating for my children that it's worth it to overcome some of the stuff that you're scared about. Listen, mamas, your kids are stinking watching you. It may just be that you're scared of Facebook Live and you don't think that that's setting an example, but I'm telling you, every time they see you do something that is scary, but you do it every way, they're taking mental note. Mental note. Mental note. Mom's doing it afraid. Mom's doing it afraid. This is why I did a triathlon. Okay, so I had to hire a swim coach at age 39. So fast forward now, we're to um, I'm age 46. Turned 46 this summer. I've done nine triathlons. Um, lived to tell about every one of them, but every single time thought I would die. Um, so something as simple as kayaking, which I did last two weeks ago for the first time, um, causes a lot of anxiety in me. Uh, since I have never been a swimmer, I come from a very long line of nose pluggers in my family. I'm talking, we couldn't even stand under the shower, friends. I couldn't get in the shower without snorting water. It's the weirdest thing. Water hits my face, I instinctively suck it in, okay? So to get in a kayak, which feels a little coffinish, okay? A little coffinish, lots of emotion, lots of emotion, okay? And so because when my friend Kathy invited me to do it, I felt lots of emotion. This was my cue. Do it. Do it and get over it. To other people, it's just a kayak ride. To you, it's another middle finger to fear. I mean, seriously. Come on. Can I say that on Facebook, by the way? I hope I can. I hope that's not offensive. But for some of you, you've got these things in your business that you're terrified to do. And I'm telling you, if you'll do them, it's going to take your business to the next level. So... We went out and kayaked for the first time, and I'm sitting like here. I, I, oh, look at my cute, uh, my cute running pants. I'm sitting with my legs like braced the entire time we went out in the kayak because all I can think of is, surely I'm about to turn over and die. Surely I'm about to, you know, it's going down for real in the middle of Smithville Lake, and this is this is where it all ends on a kayak for me. <laughs> and um, and I we got to the middle of the you know where we were headed with the kayaks. And um, my friend Jackie was like, Jen, look. And she showed me how she tried to tip and fall out and how the thing wouldn't tip. And I'm like, are you sure? And then I realized, okay, I guess, worst case scenario, if I did tip, like I have on a life vest and I'm, and, and I, there's, my legs aren't really in the kayak. Like I can get out 
And so, like, I guess I can't really die. Like, does that make sense? So I'm telling you, for those of you who are like, Facebook Live, I'm going to die. You're not going to die. Okay, you're not going to die. When I wrapped my head around on my kayak, the fact that, gosh, I worked this up into my head. It would be so scary. And it really wasn't that scary. And then I went out this weekend and I took my middle kiddo, Easton who's 13 and who knows mom's scared of water and we kayaked together. So listen, sometimes you guys are doing that in your head with what Facebook Live is going to feel like. And what I would like to propose is you may fall in love with it. I fell in love, in love with kayaking to the point where now we're, we're, we're gathering our Dick Sporting Good Rewards points and we're about to buy kayaks, buy kayaks. So for those of you who have this worked up in your head that you're going to die on a Facebook Live, you're going to live, okay? You're going to live, just like I lived through a kayak. You will live through a Facebook Live. You have this button down here in the corner. It's right there. It says finish, and you can end it at any time. You have snot rolling down your face. You hit end. You accidentally say something that you're mortified about. You hit end, and you delete it. Like, you cannot really mess it up. So quit hiding behind your Facebook page. Go for it. When you do a Facebook Live video, you guys, you're going to get around seven times the reach on that video that you will if you just recorded yourself and uploaded it. I promise you. For some of you, your business is stuck and it's what you have to do. And it's what you have to do. Jessica, I vary them, but I've been trying to go live before lunch every day um, to talk about business. So when we're done with this, click on the get all notifications and hopefully you'll be alerted. Okay. Um, and my fourth tip of why people aren't talking back to you is honey, you might not be asking them to, you might not be asking them to, and this is the way the world is today. Okay. How many of you, we're just going to pretend for a second. So it's 10 o'clock at night and I should be talking to Mr. Magic in bed, but instead I'm laying here and I'm just scrolling. How many just scroll? You're just scrolling, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. Somebody asked where that sign up was and I forgot to pin it. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There. Oh, no, that's not pinned to the top. Hang on. I forget. I forget my own rules. There. There. Now it's pinned. And so you're, you're supposed to be, you know, talking to your spouse, hashtag marriage, hashtag responsibility, hashtag all the things, right? But instead you're scrolling on Facebook. How many of you actually stop and like, comment, or share when you're looking at something on Facebook. I rarely do. I rarely do. I do on a couple of occasions, and let me tell you those occasions, okay? Um, one of my favorite people on Facebook is Jen Hatmaker. Uh, she's my favorite because she has gone above and, above and beyond relationship building with her Facebook page. She is a fantastic example of someone who is a relationship builder, okay? So Jen Hatmaker has what I have termed the Me Too factor, which means I'll be laying in bed next to Mr. Magic and I'll come to one of Jen's posts and I'll read it and I'm like, that's hysterical. Want to pee my pants. Me too, me too, me too. I know exactly what she's talking about. Me too. And so then I feel compelled to comment because she invoked feelings in me about motherhood, children, um, being a hot mess, life, fashion, TV, shows, Netflix, whatever. And she gives us this me too factor, like where you feel like you're kind of linking arms with Jen Hatmaker and you're like, oh, totally me too. Okay. So on your own social media, you need to be working on building that me too factor. After you have been working on building that me too factor, you need to be asking them to respond to some of your posts. Which of these do you guys like? Which color should I be trying? If you had a thousand bucks today, what would you buy? And here's another tip. This is one of the tips I've told my coaching group. People like fast. And here's why. We're inundated with crap on our phones. By the way, my phone's not in my case because my phone's on my holder. So if you're asking open-ended questions like, what do you think I should do on um, painting this piece? You're going to probably hear crickets. By the way, if you listen really closely, you can hear literal crickets right now at my house. They're actually cicadas, but they sound like crickets. Hang on. Can you hear that? It sounds like they're screaming. They're applauding my Facebook Live. Okay, so instead, let me give you a tip. Instead of saying, how should I paint this buffet? I want you to say, I'm considering three colors for this buffet. Which do you think? Red with a glaze, uh, 
black with gold detailing or navy blue um, high gloss. Give them A, B, or C because every day of the week, people will take time to just type in A, B, or C. But if you're asking them to type in a long, drawn-out thing, baby, I don't even do that. You don't do that. We're all busy. At 10 o'clock at night, my eyes are crossing. Mr. Magic's over there elbowing me, wondering me if I'm ever going to get off the phone. You know, I'm thinking, good Lord, the kid's alarm's going to be going off soon. I need to be going to bed. Ain't nobody can even focus my 46-year-old eyes anymore on my phone to type a comment. This is true. So a lot of you are like, oh, nobody comments back. Listen, girls, boys, half of you aren't commenting back either. Half of you aren't commenting back either. Don't take it so personally. Okay, so keep giving, 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 giving on your Facebook page. Then give them a little bit of a sell. Make sure that they know who you are on your Facebook page. You know, it's uh, your picture being in the profile picture is not enough. When someone does a face, when they see your Facebook live, they start to see your tendencies. They start to see that you over talk with your hands. They start to see that um, when you get really excited, you sit up really close and this vein in my thing pops out. They start to hear the cadence of your voice, which apparently I've been told I, I put children to sleep. And so they're, they're, they start to think and feel like they know you even when they don't. That's what some of you are missing. Your people following your page don't know you. They don't know you. They don't know you. And listen, we live in a world where everyone is overconnected, um, but we are lonelier than ever. And you never know if letting people know you this much can help change the direction of someone's life. You never know that. So I encourage you guys to start opening yourself up to some new um, things on your Facebook page. If what you've been doing, baby, and working, Chuck it. Start something else. Start something else. Be interesting. Be engaging. Be personable. Be consistent. You need at least four Facebook posts a day, at least. And I coach every person in my coaching group that you need to be going live two to three times a week on Facebook. Here's what will happen. If you've never looked at your Facebook insights before, as soon as we're done here, I want you to run over to your PC, sit down, Go to your Facebook page, click on Insights at the top, and I want you to look, and I want you to see down at the bottom, what types of things have people talked back to you on? What's gotten your best reach? I've had four Facebook Lives go to over a million on the reach organically without me putting any money behind it, without me putting any money behind it. And one of them, you guys, was me getting my nails done. I mean, seriously. That's like crazy stuff, right? By the way, I picked off this nail and I do need to go get my nails done. <laughs> so, so be trying the Facebook Lives. You're welcome, Linda. What questions can I answer for you guys? Let me see if I can, you know what? Let me try to be fancy schmancy here and bring it up on my PC where I can see stuff better because I literally cannot see questions practically um, on there. So hold on one second. I'm bringing it up on my PC. Hang on. Hang on, hang on. And for those of you who asked about my coaching group, go join. Go join today, though, before we have a guest in on Wednesday on my group who is showing us how to use Facebook bots for business, and that's going to be super fun. Okay, now I can see comments. Yay! Okay. Um, Kelly says, you got so real on your Facebook page last week that you kicked off your shoes while you worked. That's right, girlfriend. You go for it. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Oh, I only can, can see like five comments. You love this in-depth Facebook talk, says Lynn. I'm so glad. Um, v says, how do you stay motivated? It's easy to be lazy at home. You know what? V, I um, am very self-disciplined. And, um, and I don't know how to teach people to be that. But most of my self-discipline comes from being in places I know I never want to go back to. Let me give you an example. I have a degree in computer-based information systems. I did software development for a large telecom company in Kansas City um, for a long time. I worked as an administrative assistant. I sat in a desk for 11 years. And part of my motivation comes from, I will never go back to sitting in a cubicle. Can I get an amen from some of you creatives? This is worth sharing just because of that. I, part of my motivation comes from where I don't want to go back to. Part of my motivation comes from a real sense of responsibility that when God gifts you with some talents here on earth, he fully expects you to use them. Not just kind of play with them, not just kind of eh, mess around, kind of see what happens. No, God fully expects you 
to use the gifts that he's given you here on earth. And often for some of you guys who are crafty, you're creative, you're um, a maker, what have you, um, you think that it stops there. And it doesn't stop there. Your craft is often your catalyst. It's how you bring people into your web, so to speak. And then you can influence them in other ways. So for years, all I talked about on my Facebook page was painting. All I talked about was painting. All I talked about was painting. When my heart has always been to encourage women. My heart has always been, how can I encourage women to step outside their comfort zone and do stuff they've never done before? This is why I, um, I literally own a Facebook page in Kansas City for triathletes. Me, 30 pounds overweight, uh, fluffy around the middle, um, trying really hard not to go eat some freaking M&Ms. Um, but I run a page for triathletes, not because I'm a stud athlete, but because I want women to do stuff that they're scared of. There is so much freedom on the other side of that, you guys. Your family needs to see you stinking, trying stuff that scares the bejesus out of you. Because there's always freedom on the other side of that. And I am an ambassador of freedom. I know that. I know that. And so for me, the motivation comes a lot from those two things. I take my responsibility and the gifts God gave me very, very seriously. And I never want to go back to in a cubicle. The other thing is I love what I do. When you are in love with what you do, you don't need a lot of motivation, honestly. And, um, and you know, there's things that my husband and I want to be able to do and provide for our family that require me to do this well. And that's a motivation as well. So great question. Thank you for asking me that. Um, let's see, where did I get the shirt with the thumb hole? Carol Sam's Club, baby. It's been a couple of years though. Um, Melly Mel says, you don't know how you found me, but you love me. Hey, girlfriend, I love you. And how do I get a cool name like Melly Mel? Melly Mel. Like that is kick butt. So much better than Jennifer. Melly Mel, I want that. Um, what else? What else can I ask for you? Let's see, Jennifer, your books do fairly well on Amazon, says author Leslie Fear, and you've gotten tons of views. But um, you would love to get a bigger Facebook reach. You go live, but seriously, you've run out of things to talk about. Okay, Leslie, first of all, I think you're in my coaching group, right? I think you are, girlfriend. Make sure you get my list of the 60 free ideas for you on things you could go live on Facebook about. But here's one of the things that I want to talk about a little bit. Um, write this down. Okay, so I have a paint finish of the month club on Facebook that I've had for almost two years. Um, and I've let it kind of do this. In the last couple of years and the reason I've done that is because every month I was needing to come up with a new paint finish and it felt um, like pressure to me and it felt like pressure to me when my heart isn't in the paint nearly as it's in the people okay and so I was like okay what do I need to do and so I heard somebody um, give me this quote when I was at that conference in Toronto that um, you don't necessarily have to be Beyonce you can be Beyonce's manager and I was like what mind blown. I don't have to be the one teaching people how to do all the paint finishes every month. I can just gather amazingly talented talent and let them teach my people how to do the paint finishes every month. Why am I even talking about this? What was the question? Oh, so Leslie, you could, instead of only talking about your book, you could do a book reading club. You could promote other people's books. I'm gonna be um, promoting Chip Gaines' new book. Um, you could promote things you find at the library. Start an online book reading club. Start an online group where people, um, where you actually read a chapter of something out loud together. Listen, there's times when I'm in the bathroom putting on makeup and I don't listen to the news. I don't listen to the news because then I'm gonna see pictures of Texas and I'm gonna cry. Okay, and so what I will do is I will turn on a Facebook Live video or I will turn on a podcast every single day of the week because I don't have to like watch it, I can just listen. So Leslie, what about just um, reading on a Facebook Live? The sound of that may be almost like harmonic and just beauty just to hear somebody read on a Facebook Live. Do that, girlfriend, oh, do that. I'm so excited about that idea, um, okay. Joan says, um, oh, you like that advice, Leslie? I'm so glad. Does my phone match my outfit, Leanne? It does. <laughs> I did not intend that. 
<laughs> um, I just missed somebody's question. I'm so sorry. Is sharing your own business Facebook Live on your personal page weird? You don't want your friends to start rolling their eyes at your videos. Nikki, do it on occasion if it's something that you think is important and could really be a blessing to them. And if not, um, let your other people share it. Some of your friends will be touched by it and they'll share it. Most of my friends don't ever share any of my stuff, and that's fine. It's it's not their thing. You know what I mean? It's not their thing, and that's okay. And so um, every once in a while, I will share something from my business page to my personal page, but most of the time, I don't. Okay, let's see. What else? Ish, um, I'm losing comments here. I love you too, Debbie. What else can I answer for you guys? Yeah, Joan, stepping out of your comfort zone is hard, but... There's always freedom on the other side. Kelly said, your daughter always asks, who is this lady and why are you watching her? That's hilarious. Please tell your daughter. I said, hello and happy Monday. Susan says, you immediately went to Jen Hatmaker's page and started to follow her. Susan, I know, right? Go to my website, themagicbrushinc.com. Go up to podcast at the top and listen to my um, podcast interview with Jen Hatmaker. She's fascinating. She's fantastic. She's relatable. You feel like you want to have coffee with her. She's everybody's best friend. Um, so watch what she does. You know, sometimes you guys, um, we're, we're, people think we're playing on Facebook. Quit playing on Facebook. Quit playing on Facebook. Quit seeing what your cousin's kids are doing. Quit just watching to see what your best friend's eating for lunch. Instead, start looking at your Facebook through the eyes of a business person who watches what other people in other industries are doing and takes note. The smart girl takes notes, okay? I just was coaching Ava the other day. Ava, where do smart girls go on a Friday night? The library, mom. That's right, Ava. <laughs> so what do smart girls do when they're on Facebook? You take notes. You screenshot stuff that you see and you're like, dang, I didn't even think of that. I mean, that's on a motorcycle Facebook page, but what a great idea. I love the way that they sent people over to their website or I, I love that how they placed that picture or what a great idea of something that they just tried that I haven't seen before. Okay. And so look at what other people are doing that's working outside of your industry. And, and tweak it around, throw it, you know, like a pizza dough and put it in your industry and put it back on, on Facebook and try it with something that's relevant to you. Damon says, you listened to Gary Vee's book last week. You loved it. Yes. I love him, Damon. He's all about the hustle though. And I'm not about the hustle. I'm all about getting off this Facebook live, going to take a walk, having some lunch, doing a podcast, going to my counseling and checking out for the day. So Gary V and I are on opposite wavelengths there because I don't want to work more. I want to work way less and make way more. For me, it's very important to have freedom in two areas of my life. One is finances and one is time. If I have a ton of money in the bank, but I'm working 100 hours a week, who cares? And if I have zero dollars, but I work 10 hours a week, who cares then too, right? So for me, I've got to have both. And so Gary V, he, he's, a, he's a hard worker. So Lee, thank you for being new to my group. Um, let's see, a lot of these are getting kind of cut off. I want to answer at least one more question. Hang on, let me see what else I can find here. Um, how do you pinpoint what you're good at to start your business, says Melissa. Melissa, what do people ask you about all the time? What do your friends text you for? Do they text you when they're getting ready to rearrange their furniture in their house? Do they text you when they're getting ready to list their house for sale? Do they text you when they need somebody to come up with some great ideas for a baby shower gift? What do they text you for and ask you for? Those are all your clues of what you are really good at that people already regard you as an expert in. So do those, start there. So Sherry says, my Facebook lives are awesome. Thank you, honey. And you referred to me as your friend, Jennifer, the other day. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, somebody just asked Brianna about a particular social media scheduler. I schedule stuff out on Twitter. Um, and I use Sprout Social for that. But if you're going to schedule anything on Facebook, you only use Facebook's scheduler. Every person I coach knows this. Facebook wants you to use all their tools. So when you go and you use something else, Meet Edgar, um, Sprout Social, whatever, the reach on that's going to go down. Facebook penalizes you. Is it penalized or penalized? Either way, they catch you off on the calves on those posts, okay? Don't do that. Use Facebook's scheduler. They put it there because they want you to use it. Facebook's a game, you guys. I coach women all month long in my private group about Facebook. It's a game and you gotta, you gotta know how to play the pieces. So you are welcome. I encourage you to join us there and you do get my Facebook live training for free when you join. Let me answer one more question here, okay? 
You just watched a girl feeding her horse get 2,000 views. Right, Janice? It's crazy. And you know, half of your views are going to come after your live is finished. You will get the majority, like 75 to 80% of your comments while you're live, but you will get 50% of your views when you're done. So, um, let me see. Your hubby knows who I am and says your girl is on. Debbie, tell your hubby I appreciate him. <laughs> Thank you. All right, friends, I've got some work to do so I can be done for the day. Bless you guys. If there's any other questions that I can answer for you, put them here below and I'll try to get to them a little later. You're a blessing to me. And I especially appreciate those of you who have shared this and who tune in every day to listen uh, to some of my talks to creative people. I My heart is for you. I want to help you in any practical way that I can um, on this free platform. And then I also want to encourage you to come over and, um, and allow me to do some business coaching with you and help take your business to the next level. So the link is on here. Bless you guys. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.